Material handling is a broad term that encompasses both manual handling, which is the lifting, carrying, or moving of objects without assist devices, as well as the moving of loads with mechanical aids, such as hand trucks, pallet jacks, forklifts, and other material handling equipment. No matter what type of load you intend to transport or what method you intend to use to move it, the first step is to prepare for the job. In other words, you need to come up with a plan for safely lifting the load, carrying it to its destination, and placing it securely. First, check the load's stability and weight. For small loads, you can do this by tilting it slightly to one side to determine if it is too heavy to lift and carry alone. If a load is too heavy for you to lift without assistance, do not attempt to lift it. Get help from a coworker or use a hand truck or other device designed for transporting materials. On larger loads, check for labels or tags which may give you an indication of the weight and any special handling requirements for the contents. Of course, large loads require more powerful lifting equipment. When this is the case, you must ensure that the weight of the load does not exceed the lifting capacity of the equipment to be used. In addition to weight, the stability of the load must also be considered. Before moving a load manually, you may need to restack loads that are composed of multiple pieces. Moving a load on a pallet, lifting with a crane, or using a hand truck or dolly also requires the load to be arranged in a stable manner with the center of gravity of the load in the appropriate location to ensure a stable move. Safe material handling requires planning, and an important part of your plan is a safe path of travel. Make sure your planned route has no slip or trip hazards, as well as any obstacles that may interfere with the equipment you may be using. Also, check for overhead hazards, especially when using forklifts, cranes, or when moving tall loads. And finally, inspect your route for any potential hazards created by passing near fixed objects such as doorways, support beams, or storage racks. Many injuries occur when our body parts strike fixed objects we weren't prepared for while traveling with a load. When moving materials, make sure you are wearing the appropriate shoes or boots for the work environment to be entered and for the materials to be transported. Also consider if eye protection, hearing protection, or a hard hat are required. If you're not sure, ask. If the material has rough or sharp edges or splinters, wearing leather work gloves can prevent hand injuries. If the load requires handling chemical containers, you may need to wear chemical resistant gloves. Staying within the limits of your lifting capabilities is part of having a good safety attitude. Of course, part of that same safety commitment is to always use proper lifting techniques when lifting and moving materials. Using proper techniques is key to preventing back injuries. Once you have decided that it is safe to lift an object by yourself, it is important to make sure you follow safe lifting, carrying, and placing techniques. First, decide how you will grip the load. If the object has handles or hand holds, you should use them. Tilting the load can also create a spot for a solid grip. Stand close to the object with your feet spread about shoulder width apart. Then lower yourself down to the load by bending your knees and keeping your back in its natural position which maintains the back's natural curvature. The motion to avoid is bending over at the waist. Bending at the waist like this is harmful to your back and is the cause of many injuries. After lowering yourself by bending your knees, get a firm grip on the load and bring the load close to your body. Then use the strength of your legs to rise up and lift the load. The reason to keep the load close to your body while lifting is to minimize the force placed on your lower back. Holding a load away from you creates much more force on your back than holding it close. Some people find that taking a stance wider than shoulder width allows you to get even closer to the load and makes for an easier lift. A wide stance also allows you to get lower with less knee bend 
It is easier to rise up again if your knees are not bent to an extreme angle. Be sure not to suddenly jerk or snatch a load and never twist your back while lifting. Jerking and twisting can cause strains and sprains in the ligaments and muscles of the spine, which can be quite painful and take a long time to heal. Instead of twisting your back while lifting, perform the lift first, then shuffle and pivot your feet in order to turn. This turns your whole body as one unit and greatly reduces the wear and tear on your back. Once you arrive at your destination, be sure to keep your back in its natural posture with the load close to your body while lowering the object. Use your legs to lower the object straight down while bending your knees. Make sure your fingers aren't underneath the load when setting it down. When using a hand truck, always use the correct one for the job. To keep the load stable, place the heaviest items at the bottom and only stack objects to a height that you can see over while traveling. When traveling, grip the handle firmly and when possible, you should push the truck instead of pulling it. When you reach your destination, use proper lifting techniques when unloading the hand truck and be sure not to twist your back while placing the load. When loading a cart or dolly, Make sure the total weight of the items is distributed evenly to maximize stability. Some carts also have a lower storage area. Placing some of your items on the lower level helps keep the center of gravity of the cart low, which makes it less likely to tip over. Accessing the lower level of a cart without straining your back can be a challenge. Don't bend at the waist like this. Instead, squat down like this and keep the load close to your body until it's time to transfer it to or from the cart. You can also kneel down like this and use your leg as a bridge to help support the load as it is transferred. This technique is especially useful for heavier items and also works to access items on low shelves or under racks. Material handlers often need to load, move, and handle pallets. Working with pallets creates a few safety concerns that must be considered. When handling pallets, gloves should be worn to avoid splitters. Ideally, a forklift or pallet jack would be available to move pallets when needed, but this is not always the case. Two workers lifting together can easily move a pallet, but a pallet may also be safely moved by one person. To move a pallet alone, you can tilt the pallet onto its edge so that the planks run parallel to the floor. Then bend your knees and find a secure grip on one of the planks and lift with your legs. Another method is to simply push the pallet while sliding it along the floor. This allows you to move the pallet without lifting. Pallets should be stored flat and not on an edge. Pallets stored on edge tend to fall over, which can result in injury. Avoid walking or standing on pallets. Pallets are the source of many ankle injuries. If you can't reach what you're after without walking on a pallet, consider having the pallet moved to be more accessible. It may also be possible to use an assist device to move the object within reach. Before placing a pallet into service, it should be inspected to ensure it is in good condition. In this program, we have discussed some of the safe work practices and precautions that you can take to prevent painful and often disabling injuries while performing material handling operations. Perhaps the most important point to remember is to stay within the limits of your physical lifting abilities and to seek help when a load is too heavy to safely move alone. This help may come in the form of a coworker, a material handling device, a powered industrial truck, or some other means. No matter the method, use the tips and techniques learned in this program to make sure that when you decide to move an object, that you're able to move it safely. Thank you for your attention. Now, go have a good day and a safe day.